Hello, everyone. Just wanted to give you an update. Um, these updates air as of August 12th on some athletic updates for you. So fall sports, um, just want to review the dates and times of the first practices. Uh, boys and girls cross country uh, start date remains August 17th. They will be practicing 8 o'clock a.m. and they will meet in the new wrestling room. Uh, you must wear a mask while you're in the wrestling room. Um, but will not be required to wear a mask when you're outside running. Uh, girls golf, you will be starting August 17th. First practice will be 2 o'clock at Northbrook. Girls volleyball will now be starting August 7th, and they will be practicing 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the high school gym. Um, and uh, at this time, you are required to wear a mask. Boys soccer will now start September 7th. Uh, first practice will be 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock at the soccer field. And football, uh, starting date is September 7th. Um, the, the starting date or the practice time, we're going to kind of hold off to see what the Board of Control uh, meeting comes out on Friday. But as soon as we have some information, the coaches will get that information to the football players for the times of the first practice. So some other things about fall sports, there's lots of questions. Um, there's a lot of questions I still have and a lot of answers I don't have. Um, but here are some things that we do know. Um, the Northeastern Conference, that's the conference we play in. Uh, we have 10 schools um, that are in our conference. We have decided to play a conference only schedule. Um, so what that means is we will, we will only be playing against the nine other schools in our conference. Now, some sports don't, not all the schools sponsor those sports. Um, so, uh, those of you that may have had tournaments, you know, outside of the conference, um, we will, we will not be playing those this year. Um, we will just be sticking with uh, a conference only schedule for this fall. And we are currently working on finalizing those schedules to, just to fit the new time frame with the delay of sports. Um, there's just a lot of logistics that go in, into, uh, putting a schedule together with making these changes. So as soon as those are finalized, we will get those to the coaches and, and they will get that out to you. We are also, uh, you know, starting to discuss some guidelines, you know, such as the number of spectators that will be allowed, you know, if there'll be concessions. Um, we just felt it was a little bit too early to make any decisions on that stuff at this point. Um, but again, once we have that information, we will communicate that to you. As I said earlier, the WA Board of Control meets Friday, August 14th. Um, we're not exactly sure what's going to be uh, discussed at that. Some things we've heard is they may make an announcement about you know, the football schedule. Are they going to switch the number of games uh, in the playoffs? Um, they might give us an idea on what the WA tournament series may look like. Um, but again, not sure what's coming out of that meeting, but um, we will tune in and we will get that information to you as well. WIA uh, rumor is that they are also going to release some new fall sport guidelines for each of the sports. Um, I have not yet seen that, um, but as soon as those come out, we will uh, look at those guidelines and we will get those out too as well. So what do you need to turn in uh, and what do you need to be completed before the first day of practice? Um, several of you have done this stuff already, which is great. Um, that will help you, especially with the delay of stuff. We really want to make sure we get the stuff so we're not dealing with it the first day of practice. Um, you have to have this stuff completed or you will not practice. So again, with some of you being delayed several weeks, um, I re really wanna make sure you get as much time on the field as possible. So uh, you need an updated physical or an alternate year form. Um, and you can click on those links for those forms. Um, you must watch the code of conduct meeting. Um, and again, if you click on that, it's uh, this year we were, I have done a recording. Um, and you can also click on the slides um, that, uh, by that clicking on that link. Um, so you must watch that. And then you must complete the co-curricular registration, which again, if you click on that link, it'll bring you to the registration. If you have already um, have a family account, if you've already registered one child, you do not need to make another account for any other uh, um, children that you may have. You just use that same account. Um, and you'll add each of your children as they come in. Um, so that will save you some time with having to complete some, some of the stuff. But if it is your first time, you'll need to create an account. Um, and if you have any questions, um, you can give a, a, me a call here at the high score, send, send me an email. So again, 
These all must be completed before the first day of practice, otherwise you will be sitting out of practice. There's no exceptions with this. So some, some of you may be wondering, um, you know, do I need to turn a physical in this year or an alternate year form? Um, so if the, the physical that we have on file, and, and this gets where it gets tricky, some people like myself, my, my children get their physicals every year, but knowing that I didn't have to turn one in every year, I may not have turned one into the office, so we may not have it on file. But if the one we have on file here in, offer, in the office is before April 1st of 2019, you would need to get a new physical. If the physical we have on file here at the high school is between April 1st, 2019 and March 31st, 2020, you'll, would, you'll need the alternate form. Um, so again, but if, if, if you did have a physical at that point, um, and we don't have it on file, you would need to get us a copy of the physical, and then you'd also need to turn in the alternate year form, which the alternate year form is just a signature of you and dating it. Um, if we have a physical on fire file that's dated after March 31st of 2020, you are okay as long as we have it on file. So, with you know, typically people will turn their physicals in when we had the code of conduct meeting. So, where and when can you turn these physical and alternate year forms in. Um, we've gotten several in the mail. Some have been emailed. Um, the new high school office will be open uh, on Monday, August 17th from 12 to 6 and August 18th from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. So you would be able to bring in the physical or alternate year uh, at that point. You can also email uh, my athletic secretary, Kelly Addison, uh, with your copy and that is her email right there and she will get that recorded for you. Last resort is you can hand it in the first day of practice, you know, cross country starts 8 a.m. Uh, on August 17th. So if you know you have to turn it in, that's really the last resort. Coaches have several things to do that day, um, so they don't really want to be dealing with paperwork, but it's, it's better than not having it all and not having to practice. So those are the times and locations where you would be able to turn those in before school. Now, Obviously, when we have school starting September 1st, that would also be an option as well. Uh, some information on summer speed and strength. Uh, the regular summons, summer speed and strength ran through August 13th. We are going to extend summer speed and strength uh, for the week of August 17th through the 20th for high school students only. Um, and the coaches will, will talk to them about that in the summer speed and strength. Um, and then our speed and strength coach, Tyler Hammond, will work with the, with the coaches to work on the schedule for the week of August 14th and beyond um, because our teachers will have in-service and we will have to work on a schedule uh, with Coach Hammond. So just want to review the entrance to the building and your parking and construction update. Um, so as of today, not August 6th, I apologize for that, it would, it would be August 12th. The entrance to the high school is through the doors of the new wrestling uh, center by the intermediate school. And if you click on that map, that'll bring you to a, an aerial photo of that. Um, students should be parking in the athletics complex, uh, not behind the intermediate school. Um, that's for staff only. Um, and the kids have been really great about, about following this. So um, right now, they're at this moment, they're putting the final coat of asphalt um, on the new parking lot in front of the office here. Um, but they're asking us to get the word out that they we do not want anyone driving on that um, uh, through the weekend for sure. Um, they want to make sure that, um, that, that it settles and, and it dries properly so they don't have to redo anything. So please abide by the cones and, and stuff that they have up so we can get that done as soon as possible. So just want to kind of review um, some some of the protocols for uh, if someone were to test positive for COVID, uh, if someone was exposed to a person that tests positive, or someone that may have symptoms. Now, these guidelines could change, um, but these are the guidelines that we are currently following. Um, and if you click on those, um, the flow chart and the CDC guidance, you'll be able to see that. Um, these are basically the three uh, situations that we typically will run into. Um, if you were to test positive, um, you would need to be well for three days and at least 10 days since your symptoms started. Um, and you would work with the county health um, if, if you were to test positive. So um, if you were to come in close contact with someone who tested positive, 
um, you would need to quarantine for 14 days from the last contact with that person. Um, so uh, some people may ask, what is close contact? Their definition is you're uh, within the six feet of someone, someone that tested positive for uh, 15 minutes, at least 15 minutes, um, or that you had physical contact. You may have hugged them, um, holding hands, uh, things like that. Um, or you live with the person. So, um, so that is the protocol for that. Um, and, and you should be working with county health with that as well. Um, because if someone tests positive, they do some tracing. But if you were in contact with somebody that you knew was positive, um, that would be the protocol for you. Um, if, if you're showing symptoms, you know, um, and you, you didn't, you haven't taken a test, uh, you should exclude your, you will exclude yourself for three days after symptoms resolve um, without medication. Um, so again, this is um, really important uh, to follow. Um, knock on one, we haven't had any major issues to deal with. Um, some other schools have, and we want to make sure we're following these guidelines. Um, I know for athletes, that's going to be tough if, if they have to sit out. I understand that. Um, but we have to be, uh, to be a true teammate, teammate this year. It's, it's, it may be the fact that you have to sit out, um, and, 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 and not participate for, you know, if you test positive for the, the days, the days that are recommended or the quarantine for 14 days. Again, I know no one looks forward to that, but it's, it's the thing we have to do to make sure that we can continue to play sports. So, um, please, if, if you are in this situ situation, please let your coaches and, and the school know so that we can work with you. And if you, again, if you have any questions, you can always give us a call. Thank you. Um, as you know, uh, as of August 1st, masks are a uh, must be worn inside. Um, right now there is no exception for exercising. Um, so kids must wear them in the weight room if they're in the gym playing basketball, volleyball, dance team, if they're inside. And, Again, our kids have been great. Um, they've been they've been wearing them, um, so we uh, are thankful that they are following those. Um, again, instruct kids if they're not feeling well. Um, if they're not feeling well, will they have the mask on? Like they're in the weight room, um, just to step aside away from people, just to pull the mask down and to take a breath. Um, obviously, we want to make sure they're staying safe in that in that sense as well. Um, outside right now, they're suggesting to wear a mask within six feet, but not required. Um, and currently we're looking at, you know, each of the sports where there might be a, a time where they would have to wear a mask and, and, and your coaches will communicate that to you as those, those come in. Um, this is, is just some of the, or the handouts that were in the code of conduct video, just for you to review in case if you're wondering where those are. And lastly, I just want to thank everyone uh, for your patience and understandings during these uncertain times. It's been a, a very um, stressful, difficult, I, I don't want to say it, it's just been a very stressful time. It's a very uncertain time. Um, and the students have been awesome. Uh, my coaches have been awesome. Um, and we're, we're really looking forward to hopefully having all seasons for the 20. 2021 uh, school year um, and, and just thank your your kids they just been awesome it's been so great to see them back in the building uh, you know with their friends having fun you know working out being able to do what they love so again I, I continue to thank you for for all your all you have done and and your patience and again we anytime we get some new information we will send it over to you I appreciate your time and I hope you have a good rest of the summer and I look forward to having the kids back out on the fields for their seasons.